So if you're new to Facebook or have never made a Facebook page, you may ask, do I really need a Facebook page? So what I love about Facebook pages are that they're an instant connection to your audience, an instant connection to your customer. So this is a great place to connect and interact and share stories and share relevant info about your brand. So ultimately, this Facebook page gives you that voice. And you can build your reputation instantly with fast customer service, reaching new markets with this Facebook page, growing a new social clout of following and likes with this Facebook community all in one place on your Facebook page. What I love is the instant feedback. Say for one of my clients that are launching a new line and they're unsure about one style versus the other, post some mock-ups of the images on your Facebook page and ask your current customers to vote which one they prefer, which one they like, which one they would buy. So besides all these great things about building a community, there are a lot of additions that Facebook is constantly rolling out so you have the opportunity to post events, integrate various apps. Some people I know don't even have a .com. They just sell products via their Facebook page because of the apps available enabling that. Then Facebook pages are also great for polling your audience, like I said, or running contests and different promotions. So at the end of the day, what is a Facebook page? It's basically a specific page on Facebook that enables you to capture your specific audience via a like so every time you get a like these people are now liking your page and accepting what you post to show up in their newsfeed now this percent is actually lowering organically only 10 to 20 percent of what you post will show up in your audience's newsfeed but as I'll explain later there's promotions and various other things we can do to increase the visibility of your post so first off you need to sign up for a Facebook account or if you have already Go to the top right corner and click the arrow. In this menu, you'll see the Create Page option. So right here, click this, Create Page. Now on this page, you'll be able to pick what specific type of page you want to create. So don't let this option confuse you. Just break it down and see which one fits your business or service correctly. So if you just have a product or a brand that you're selling on Amazon or Etsy possibly, so therefore you would be in the brand one. Say I'm running for senator, I'm going to start a public figure Facebook page. So welcome to your new Facebook page. So before you can start growing your brand on Facebook and creating Facebook ads, you need to build and optimize your Facebook page. Now the first thing I want to teach you is customizing your Facebook page username. This is important as this username appears as your custom Facebook URL. So it is facebook.com slash your username. Claiming this vanity URL will help people find you and remember your brand. So my rule of thumb for creating a username is continuity with my brand name. So for my brand Course Envy, I want that username on every social media site, platform, service, and so on. I want people to easily find me from website to website and therefore continuity in my username on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, and even my domain, CourseEnvy.com, is all around the keyword CourseEnvy. So this not only builds my brand name, but it also makes it easy for customers to remember my page, my page name, and my URLs. So this means you'll change that current long number that you're given by Facebook to your own custom business name. So here's an example. It's facebook.com slash pages slash long number nobody cares about. Is there any keyword clout in that URL? No, not at all. You can change it to facebook.com slash your business name. But remember, you can really only set this once. So choose wisely in the beginning because if you choose to request a name change later on, you have to request permission by Facebook and not very often do they allow that because think of it. That's like changing your name. That's like changing a big Walmart. Do I change it tomorrow? No, you're establishing a brand. So Facebook doesn't want people wishy-washy and changing names constantly and inserting keywords. They want to build a stable asset of all these various Facebook pages. So as you grow your brand, you're definitely going to find out that social media is constantly changing. One thing that changes often are image sizes. So make sure to check that you're using the optimal image sizes. We have a post on CourseEnvy.com 
where we're constantly updating the optimal image sizes for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and so on. Just go to CourseEnvy.com slash social dash media dash image dash sizes. So the first thing we want to optimize on our Facebook page is the profile image. So just go up here, click that little camera, change picture. So depending on if you're a public figure or a business, I'll either use a headshot or white background image of that brand's logo. The next thing to optimize is the cover image of your Facebook page. So right here we can change cover. Click that little camera. We can choose from photos or videos. I've been getting some great conversion rates for clients by using videos in their cover photos to draw people's eyes to my call to action, the sign up button. So change cover, choose from videos, and here's a note about videos. Videos must be between 20 and 90 seconds and at least 820 by 312 pixels. The recommended size, 820 by 462 pixels. So next, we want to go to the About page. So in your left sidebar here, click About. We'll scroll down. And one of the first things I optimize is the username. So you can just click Edit here to edit that username. Depending on when you created this page, Facebook requires some brands to have a page following before you can set this username. So to do that, just invite some people. So go to your home page, scroll down over here. On the right sidebar here, community, invite friends. So get 25 people to like your page and then you can come back to the about section and edit your Facebook page username and then make sure to fill out the rest of this about section. Specifically, the about, this is your meta description, and anything else. These are all keywords that can be crawled by Google search and Facebook search. So you want this about page fleshed out and full of all your info. Next, via your about tab, and then just scroll down and click the edit about. As you can see in this pop-up, it says add short description. This short description is very important to fill out because the main reason being the first 156 characters appear in Google search results as your page's meta description. So in these first 156 characters, obviously describe your business, but make sure to include two to three relevant and highly searched keywords for your niche. And if you have room, include your domain name. So look at the short description for my page, Course Envy. Want to learn a new skill? Searching for the best online courses? Our mission at Course Envy is to dot, 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 dot. I have 255 characters that I filled up, but in those first 156, you can see I use my top three keywords, my brand name, online courses, and then best online courses. Search some of your competitors in Google and add the word Facebook to your keyword search. By doing this, you can see what they're using for their short description. Now that your Facebook page is taking shape, you'll want to invite your friends to the page. Remember, this is the easiest way to quickly get your first 25 page likes so you can claim that vanity URL by setting your username on this Facebook page. Next, you want to start to build out that page and post content. Make it look like somebody is at this actual business. You don't want to just make a Facebook page to say you made a Facebook page. You want to build it out, make it look really professional, post some content. I like to have at least 10 posts on my page before I even push it to anybody, before I start ads or before I invite friends. Put some relevant text, some relevant statuses, post some pictures, some videos. Now this all doesn't have to be original content, so don't get overwhelmed there. You can just recurate other people's stuff and post it on this page. Another great feature about Facebook pages allows you to schedule your post. So to have your Facebook page not look like you just built it in an hour, you can backdate post, you can schedule posts for the future. So it really helps you evenly distribute these posts and post you know, once a week, twice a week. You can schedule that. And then once you start to post some content, we can go into reports and see what time of day do you get the most post engagements? What day of the week do you get the most post engagements? Do you get the most likes and shares at 4 p.m. when people are just about ready to leave work? Or is it at 8 a.m. when people just get to work? Take those factors into account and then you can schedule around that. So once you save a couple drafts of posts or schedule a couple posts to be made in the future, 
You can go and check and edit and even delete those under Publishing Tools. It's the tab at the top right of your Facebook page. So like I said, you'll want to fill this out. Get your image made, get your logo made. So I'll show you how to add a button. Here's our various things. Book a service, get in touch with us, learn more about us, make a purchase or donation, use our app. So if you have an app, great. You can link it right here. The most common one is Shop Now. This I can just link to that person's website, that client's website. But if you don't have a website yet, that's fine. You can connect them with a video or just a straight contact page and so on. But let's do make a purchase. So here we go. We put in the website, add button. So besides shop now, another one I like is learn more. And then I create that cover image so the user's eyes flow through the text and write the call to action button. So a great visual, I have some branding with the logo, and then my incentive that draws them to the call to action. Grow your email list to 1200 plus in 30 days with free traffic. Learn more. It leads them right to it. So next, many clients for Course Envy don't want all these default tabs. So how do we edit these tabs? Go up to Help, Settings. So again, to manage our tabs, click Edit Page. So on this Edit Page, we can configure what template and what tabs we want to appear for our Facebook page. So our current template is shopping, edit this, and then you can scroll through and see if there's a template that's more fitting to your brand with varying default buttons and different tab design. So shopping, business, venues, nonprofit, politicians, services, restaurants, cafes, standard. So since ours is a course, this is the most fitting. People will be shopping through our courses. So besides shopping, the only other one that would be a fit would be standard. So we can view the details here. It's good for all page types with buttons and tabs to help showcase what's important to you. It's a pretty basic layout for a Facebook page. But like I said, we're selling courses so the shopping template's fine. And as I'll show you, you can edit the tabs anyway so the template really doesn't matter as much to me. So let's close this, scroll down, and here's our tabs. So home is by default on top. Maybe we don't have many events since we're an online only. We could eliminate this one. So toggle that off. Save. And then I want to bring the about to the top. So right under home. I want people to know what our shop's all about and have it be the first tab option for them under home, of course. Then you can add tabs as you wish as well. So let's go back to our page to see that About tab. And there we go. The About tab is second now. So click that About tab. And this is where we still need to fill out a lot of information. Yes, we've selected our username, our page name, our category, but we still need to fill everything out. As Facebook favors pages that are filled out, fleshed out, because they prefer complete pages to crawl. So again, come back in and get all these things filled out under your About page. The two most crucial things to start with, though, is at minimum your website and then that short description or About. So this meta description shows up in Google searches paired with your Facebook page title. Remember, before I push this out to audiences, before I start marketing, you want everything complete. And like I said, I like a good 10 posts. So it looks like I've been active on Facebook a bit longer. So you can obviously write your own. So we can publish that. Or we can go to other pages, which I like to do to curate other content. Here we go. Click share, share to a page. Select your page. And then you're posting as that page. I like to just comment on this original post because I am including original post. So no matter what I do in my post, I like to include a link to my client's website. So a little comment on the post I'm sharing, finish it like a signature, www.fansenvy.com. So no matter who shares this post in the future, even if it's shared multiple times to multiple people's pages, they can always come back to, it was posted by Fans Envy, and here's a website. So let's post that. 
So we go back to that page, refresh here. As you can see, we have those two posts. And like I've said in this course, I like to post to my Facebook pages for my clients at least one to three times per day. So that can get very busy. And I wanna post at peak times. So this is where scheduling comes into play. So let's write a post. So instead of clicking publish, click next to that, schedule. Let's post that tomorrow. And we know an optimal time is 4 p.m. Schedule. Now we can go see those scheduled posts under publishing tools. So over here, post, scheduled post. Here we go, check out. Right here, we can edit that post if we like. So I'll save that for now. Go back to the page. So as you build out your page, build out your content, your call to action button, manage your tabs, look at your competition to see how their page is laid out. What tabs and apps are they using? What kind of post? What kind of cover image? What kind of profile? Think about it. ESPN has a team of marketers working on their Facebook page and all their social media pages. They're all getting full-time salaries. So come to these pages and take bits of information to optimize your page. Obviously, you can see they're promoting their app. They want you to install their ESPN app on your phone. Check out their About page. They give a little more info about their brand, their mission, their About, the company overview. As you can see in the tabs over here, they use most of the default tabs provided by Facebook, but as you can see, there is an Instagram feed app here. So this is an app they've linked with their Facebook page. So here you go, you can see the at handle ESPN and you can view their Instagram feed. So this is a nice way to cross promote on various platforms. The next important part of your Facebook page are Facebook settings. Many things I discuss in this course can all be found via your Facebook page settings. So when you're logged into Facebook, just go to your Facebook page and click the settings link in the top right corner. So now that you have your Facebook page completely optimized, you wanna ensure that it's reaching all the people that it can with optimized Facebook settings. So first and foremost, ensure that you have everything filled out on your Facebook page. You can enable and limit many things via these Facebook settings. Everything from tagging, to if users can post, to country restrictions, to age restrictions. So really read through them all. Make sure your page is published so it shows up in Facebook search results. The next setting I use most often are page roles. Since you created this Facebook page, under your personal account, you will be the admin. That is the highest role. So under this page role settings, you can add workers to your page via the assign a new page role option. Just search your friend's name, click the drop down menu next to it to select their role, and then click the add button. As a rule of thumb, I never give admin access to anyone unless they're the co-founder. Remember, admin gives them the power to delete me from my own page. So when you look at this drop down menu, this ranks by power. Each descending role has less power, working down from admin all the way to live contributor. The most common role I assign is editor and advertiser to my staff members.